What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 784, with today's guest, Meister Max Schwenard. I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I founded Whistlekick because I love martial arts, specifically traditional martial arts, and that's why we're doing all the things that we're doing over here at Whistlekick, to connect, educate, and entertain all of you. What are all of those things? Go to whistlekick.com. If you haven't been in, let's say, a month, you're missing out on stuff. We are adding new things, new projects, new products all the time. Get on the newsletter list. That's the easiest way to know about all the cool stuff that we're working on. If you consider yourself a passionate traditional martial art, if you do karate or taekwondo or kung fu or hima, I don't care what it is. You're part of our crew, our family, if you want to be. And we make a lot of stuff and produce a lot of stuff and share a lot of stuff to our family. Get on the newsletter list. Go to whistlekick.com. Follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick everywhere. This website gets its, I'm sorry, this podcast, there we go, gets its own website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And that's where you can go to go deeper on any episode. You can grab transcripts. You can search through them. And, oh, what, what that person said that thing? You're going to find it. It's all over there, as well as the links and the photos and the videos, all the cool stuff that we do for these episodes. Now, if you want to help us out, if you want to support us, you could buy something at whistlekick.com using the code podcast15. Saves you 15%, lets us know that the shows lead to sales, and that's really helpful for us. You could also consider here what's on my list. Uh, you could leave us a rating and a review somewhere Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that you can leave a rating or review is helpful to us. You could also. Uh, you can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick starts at two bucks a month. We deliver overwhelming value. If you like these shows and you say, man, you know, I'd be willing to help out if I got a whole bunch more back. Yeah, that's what we do. So it's, it's the people who love us the most, who plunk down a few dollars a month and we give them so much back that we make sure they never leave. That's the goal right? It's all about value exchange. Now, if you are one of our biggest, best fans, if you consider yourself part of the Whistlekick family, you're probably already going to the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. You've got to type it in. And in exchange for your periodic weekly, we update it weekly, review of all the things you can do to help us in our mission, this connect, educate, and entertain thing that means so much to so many of us, we give you some exclusive behind the scenes, some stuff that we do not put up elsewhere. Sometimes it's thoughts for me, sometimes it's photos. And we just, again, try to keep you coming back. Now, today's episode with Max was a lot of fun because like a lot of these conversations, and you might've figured this out based on the title, Meister, this is someone who stepped in and done uh, some HEMA stuff, but, that's not where the story ends. We, we, we start with something that is a little bit more conventional, a little more common in the martial arts world. And then we shift over there, but then there's another hop and we get there pretty quickly in our conversation, but it ends up taking us in a direction that I think so many of you are going to find interesting. And so few of you have experienced, and that was a lot of fun. So here's my conversation with Max. Oh, yeah. So, well, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for being on. Thanks for being on. You good if we just kind of run with it now, or do we want to? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, it's my fa it's my favorite way to do it. Cool. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna talk about you. You've got you've got a style of stick fighting you teach, but you've got some other stuff that you've done, and and I get the sense still do. And uh, if you're like I don't know every other martial artist I know, it blurs together now, which I think is always yeah. a fun place. We'll we'll get there. I. I like to start at the beginning. It's just a logical place to start. So if we were to make a comic book, or if we want to be, you know, modern adults, adults a graphic novel of your martial arts journey, what would we find towards the beginning of the first issue? Wow. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I like to... the I like the visual. It's it's a it's yeah. a little more fun than saying, how'd you get started? <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh I like the image, uh, literally. I, I, I think, uh, well, I think that the first volume, I guess, would probably be, uh, wouldn't be as dramatic as Batman, I guess, but... Uh, I hope no, not. I, no. 
<laughs> but it, uh, I think like a lot of uh, a lot of people, you know, that started martial arts, I think one of the cause or the reasons behind this was, uh, you know, I was at school, I was getting a little bit bullied. My parents uh, were, uh, you know, looking into solutions for that. And, you know, it's never easy. And um, you know, uh, so they decided uh, that there's this karate dojo in town. And so we're, we're going to send you there. And, um, and also, I think they were, you know, I wasn't the, the most uh, sport inclined kid when I was, uh, I was young. So uh, I think they were also trying to find something that I would like and I would stick to and, and get, get me moving a little bit, uh, get me out, out of the, of the couch, you know? And so I started this, uh, this, um, training at this Kyokushin, uh, dojo, which was the, uh, I'm from a small town in, um, uh, Eastern Quebec in, uh, the Gaspé Peninsula. Um, uh, people don't know about where it is. Uh, if you, um, if you just go up, uh, New York, you find New Brunswick and, just over that, there's like this, what do you call the crab pincer, which is that peninsula. That's where I'm from, from the northernmost point. I want to, I, I, I want to look this up because when someone says Quebec, I'm generally, I'm, I'm two and a half hours from Montreal. Right. Um, but you're, you're talking about farther away from that. So just, oh yes. Name, uh, what's the name of the town? Oh, <laughs> saint anne des -Mont. Uh, so if you, uh, you, you can, you can look. Saint Armand? Yes, yeah, Saint, -Anne, Saint Anne of the Mountains. Uh, so Saint Anne des Monts. Um, okay. It, it's just, uh, you know, if you, if you look for Gaspé, you're, uh, you're, you're really, you're going to be close enough. I guess. <laughs> uh, and it's, uh, it's part of the Appalachian um, Mountains. Uh, so it goes up, you know, and it kind of ends. Oh, okay. Okay. There, there you are. Yes. I gotcha. All right. So, pretty small so town. Fairly close to Quebec City is what I'm seeing. Uh, about uh, five hours from there. Oh, okay. Then then yes. I'm not in the right place. <laughs> anyway, I, I'll 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 stop. Bur the, the audience is going, Jeremy, stop. Okay. I'm back. No, no, no. It's all right. Uh, no, so anyway, I, I, yeah, it was from this small town there, and it, it was literally the only dojo we had uh, in town mm -hmm. for probably hours uh, driving around was this one, but it was great. I think it was a great place to start, start with Eugene um, uh, and Kevin Betty Sensei. Um, we're both uh, uh, kind of a family dojo there. And um, so I, I trained in there for about eight years. Wow. And um, yeah, it was. Uh, well, hold, hold on, hold on. Eight, eight years is a long time. The, most people don't find a school and just plunk down and say, I'm training here for eight years. I mean, that's generally achieving black belt. And how, how old were you when you started? Uh, I was, not, I, I'm not really sure actually uh, how, how young I was. At. I think it was probably around, I would say 11, 12, okay. something like that. Um, okay. yeah. uh, so, it, sorry, go yeah, ahead. There, there were, you were talking about, about bullying and some other things. Yeah. So did, did you and your parents find what you were hoping for in that school? I think, yeah, I think so. I think uh, it, it really, it helped in, in many ways. You know, I think it, uh, and it, it was at a, a good uh, junction in my life, I think, to where, um, you know, I was uh, trying to find myself a little bit more. But um, it was, uh, I, I always remember, you know, when uh, it was this, this one bully who uh, had uh, a lot of issues with and you know this one one day this morning at the the school locker you know comes mm -hmm. uh, comes up behind me you know as he would usually do grabs my arm does a little arm bar behind me and it was uh at this point i think i had been training for uh, a couple of months uh something like that and so anyway i i get free i turn around i i just slam my elbow into his ribs and he goes oh yeah. And I look at him and say, oh, by the way, I told you I started karate. And he just you know, looks at me like just grabbing his gut. He's like, oh, uh, sorry. And, just, <laughs> and that's the last time I ever had to, to deal with, with this guy. Um, and yeah, that really, that, that, from, from there, it really made a difference, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, so probably have uh, uh, heard about this or I don't know if you ever dealt with that 
in your life. But I think with a lot of bullies, you know, it's same with a lot of criminals are looking for easy targets. And yeah. if, uh, if it's not easy, then they just, just move on. Right. Um, so yeah, that, that, it's almost that, if it's natural and, you know, we look happy yeah. with animals happens with people. And, you know, in the last 20 years, we've tried to change that doesn't seem to work so well. Yeah, it's uh, you know, they they well, yeah, you have to say that. I think it's it, it's natural. It makes sense that uh, you know, if if you're looking for uh to prey on people, uh, you know, you're you're just going to go for the, the the easiest easiest picking. That's uh that's human uh, human nature, I guess. Uh but yeah, it it, it also um sprung me into kind of a lifelong love for martial arts. Um, you know, because I, I've always been like this, you know, I, whenever I take something up, I, I never do it kind of half-assed. I always go in it fully and, uh, you immerse. Was the with, uh, yeah. 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 And, and I've always, you know, the history was always my, one of my big, big interests and I, and I work in the field now. Uh, but even back then I, I, I started, you know, reading tons and tons of stuff about martial arts history and I, i'm sure my sensei sometimes were were just sick of of me you know being a little little high school uh mm. uh rat and going like actually <laughs> 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 i didn't say that in class but uh yeah they were uh uh but it, they were great and uh still uh still friends with them now but um yeah so i you know I, I continue with this and i i think another big happening for me was uh, in I 2004 I traveled to Japan um, I was uh, stayed there for three months in uh, a friend's family uh, it's a girl I had met in college and she uh, uh, she had come to learn French and she was going back to Japan she said you know if you want to uh, come around in the summer with me we'd love to have you around and uh I, I decided to do that uh so uh and while i was there of course i was i was uh staying in osaka the big city uh really really interesting place but uh so i decided like well you know while i'm there let's i'll, I'll do as many martial arts as i can i'm gonna i'm gonna use that time wisely so i i found this uh Kyokushin dojo and uh it's uh, the first time I, I showed up. So my friend, it was a bit of a mis misunderstanding. We realized later on, but she called in, you know, she said, oh, you know, my friend's from, from Canada. He'd like to join in. Can he just stop by? And I, oh, yeah, I'm not sure. So she looks at the schedule and she says, oh, there's uh, this uh, adult class tonight. Do you, you want to go? I'm like, sure. Yeah, uh, let's go. I, I wasn't quite an adult yet in, for Japan, uh, but, you know, uh, Made made it anyway, uh, but anyway, I go there and um, so first off, I arrive late, so oh. I I'm, I'm just I, I step in the door and I want to melt in the floor. You know, yeah, so, so embarrassing. I I feel yeah, the exact uh, same way, especially in Kyokushin and the way I was uh, brought up in the style of here was uh, you know it was almost military like you know you uh, yeah arrive late you're just uh you're you're in for a really bad time <laughs> um, but they they were a lot more relaxed uh i found over there uh about this but anyway i i get in and you know i'm just uh so sorry i like the sensei just oh, come in come in and i i see that everybody's sparring you know and um and just uh you know i, I get changed and I, I come in and he just they couldn't speak much french or english well no french at all <laughs> not much english but he looks at me like sparring, sparring. I'm like, okay, okay. And I look around, see nobody's wearing any equipment. I'm like, okay, it's probably just, you know, people are doing a little bit uh, cardio sparring, you know, just, uh, let's go, let's go at it. Let's see, let's see how it goes, you know. So first round, he he steps in with me and you know, we uh, go at it, and um, I see him like laughing and smiling a lot. I'm like, what's going on? And so anyway, we uh, so round two, we everybody shuffles, and then I, I end up with this mountain of a uh, black belt. Now this guy looks at me like I'm, I'm not a big guy. Like I'm five six. I'm I, I was even in Japan, you know, I wasn't uh, really uh, uh, 
that uh, that much taller than most people or mm-hmm. not at all. And, but this guy was probably six something. And anyway, looks at me down, you know, with most uh, contempt you could you could have for somebody. Mm-hmm. And uh, but anyway, in my mind, I'm still well, no problem. This is uh, cardio, right? Yeah, uh, let's go. Um, so I go, man, and then. And after a while, I get, I guess he gets a little bit sick of that, pushes me, grabs my head with both hands and flat knees right in the side of the head. So I don't know how I managed to stay up, but anyway, I, I spin around. It's a big flash. I look around, kind of dazed and confused, and I'm expecting somebody to jump in and say, whoa, 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 no, stop, stop. But I look around and I realize at that moment that uh, I don't know what I stepped into, but this is not cardio sparing. Everybody mm. is just going like full on, no equipment. And I'm like, okay, I don't know much Japanese. I don't know how to say. <laughs> and I, I wouldn't anyway. So I just. Uh, Had that, you ever that, done that before? Was that something you aware? Yeah, you yeah we, we, would, we would do that in class, but usually, you no, know, we would come knowing what it was, uh, sure. was going to be. You were, you were mentally uh, prepared and yeah. 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 So anyway, I, I found out after a class that it was actually not quite an adult class. It was a special class they had for a full contact uh, tournament that was uh, going to be happening. Oh. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, so anyway, fun, fun times. Um, uh, but what this kind of made me realize when I trained there, let's see where, where I'm going to with this, but Again, small guy like me, and I was thinking, you know, like all the while, you know, I did this because uh, I started initially because I wanted to defend myself from bullies and all that. And I realized that, you know, if I met this guy in the street and he attacked me uh, and I try to use Kyokushin and he does Kyokushin or something similar, I, I have no chance. He's just going to steamroll me. So at that point, I was like, you know what, I need to, I, I need to. F- to do something else i need to uh i need to find other tools uh, to put in my my toolbox and so uh, that's when i started doing like i trained for a while in brazilian jiu-jitsu uh maga and i that's where i also found weapons and uh started training in uh shinkendo at first uh which i i fell in love with uh still and i still do kenjutsu by uh mm. I, did, um, uh, did about uh, eight years, I think, in, in, uh, as well in, in Shinkendo. But I then I switched to uh, Niten, to the school of Yamato Musashi. Uh, now do Yagyu Shinkagiru. Um, and uh, from then on, I, I really kind of fell in love with weapon martial arts. Um, and so that's, uh, uh, it's, it's been one of my uh, main uh mm. thing now um had just, your karate school growing up done any kobodo a little bit a little bit and i was uh said that there was one thing that really always um uh, uh resonated with me too um mm. and i think I, I had a little bit of a uh, i guess a, a knack for it um you know, my, my, i wasn't the best student when it came to doing kata you know or uh, they had a hard time usually remembering the, the whole sequences and then uh sometimes my, my, not my alone. yeah well the, my teachers would be a bit discouraged but the, with the the weapons and kabuto stuff they they were they, they were sometimes amazed by how more how easier it would be for for that um but yeah we did very little and and it's something that um no, maybe jumping around a little bit, but it's it's something that I realized over the years too is that you know doing so much weapon work, martial arts that oftentimes in a lot of martial arts circles, weapons are very much an afterthought, if anything at all, and people come from an unarmed martial arts background and. They bring the the theories and the understanding they have from other martial arts, and they they try to to squeeze that 
into the weapon uh, world. Hmm. And it doesn't always work because uh, there are things that are universal. There are things that, you know, that will translate very well. But, you know, discussing these things with a lot of people, sometimes I realize that when they come from an unarmed background, there's a lot of deprogramming you have to do sometimes uh, because some things are like like uh, range, measure, tempo, those kind of things mm-hmm. that are important if you're doing unarmed martial arts, but not to the extent that they are in and with with weapons where you know I can if I'm boxing I, I can take a few punches to the body I can you know I can stay in what I would call in, in stick fighting time of the hand uh, no problem I can protect myself at least for a while there but I can't do that if I have a knife if I have a sword I can't just stand there and take blows obviously you know? yes <laughs> It'd be really a really bad ending for me um, but it's you know I this is a common theme whenever I I, 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 I deal with people that uh, again come from these on our martial arts and I, and, I, and, and I went there too you know but you know like oh you just gotta crash in you know just come in you know like, bang, bang, and, and then they, they they come in they crash yeah, that's in very much the Kyokushin way yeah, yeah absolutely Meet force with force get there be willing to take the shots oh yeah, oh, yeah. just like, be tougher we... just be tougher than the other guy and you'll win yeah, well, how, many sword, classes, like uh, you know, how many classes I spend just uh, be like, okay, for now the next uh, two minutes, we're, we're just going to punch you in the gut. And just going <laughs> to stand there and take it. Like, okay. <laughs> it, but, I, I had mean, a little bit of that growing up. One of my instructors was brought up in some Kyokushin, so I get it. Yeah, yeah, we had some uh, we had some really tough uh, sensei sometimes. It was this... Uh, some of these guys, you know, like when I was younger, there were still a few older Japanese guys, you know, that mm. came here after the war and uh, they still had this very much like military boot camp attitude to, to training. And uh, which, you know, it, they, I think it certainly has some benefits for a lot of people, but also, you know, it, sometimes you kind of have to get over that and find yeah. some better ways that uh, to get that knowledge through right. um, but yeah so they anyway it's 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 been one of my pet peeves um under the recent years trying to uh, really explain those differences to people and how they how, how important they are and how they can uh uh uh, they can sometimes present solutions to uh, some problems that people have coming into our martial arts. You know, like people saying oftentimes, you know, when oh, when you're knife and you're doing knife fighting, but some people say, oh, there's no knife fighting. Yeah, that's that's another subject. But uh, people say, oh, you you should always expect to get cut. And I was like, eh, maybe, but again, yes, if you're if you're approaching it from the same strategy as an arm martial arts, yes, you should expect to get caught. That that will happen. But if you're really, you know, training your measure, if you're training your tempo, then you know, as long as you're not being rushed by some dude on CPC or whatever or PCP or whatever, but uh, it's actually there's some chances you might not yet injured at all um uh and i i don't i say there i say this from somebody who's never been in a life or death knife fight like i think 99.9 percent of the population uh, but yeah i it's things i've i've observed over the years but anyway it all that to say yeah it was uh i uh, we did some kabuto <laughs> and kill cushion and but it especially thinking back on this now, it, it resonates with me that, uh, you know, again, people were always approaching this from their Kyokushin background and mm. not necessarily saying, seeing the value because, oh, it's, you know, it's all these old stuff. You know, it's not, 
not going to make you win any tournament, maybe cut out tournaments, but, and it's not going to, you know, we're not going to use uh, bow staff in the street or like, maybe, but anyway. Um, and then a couple of years later, I um, traveled to Ireland. Um, so with my brother-in-law, uh, and we, because we, one day we were in our Irish pub and uh, maybe we drank a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, well, maybe a few Guinness too many. And we, we go like- It's an hey, Irish pub. I, I'm pretty sure that's yeah. the cost of admission is too many Guinness. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. Like if we were the only people that ever happened, ever drank too many Guinness in that pub. Uh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> if we, we decided, hey, you know what, this summer, let's go to Ireland. Uh, so we did, we, we, we stayed there for, for summer. And again, because I was so much into martial arts, I think, Hey, you know what? I, I, by then I, I had been involved in HEMA, uh, for a few years, uh, you know, was studying mostly 19th century, uh, fencing, uh, sources and, uh, stick fighting. And I, I, ran into in some forums uh people saying uh, talking about irish stick fighting and uh in my head i thought like oh it's a thing you know like, irish stick fighting I'd, I'd love to try that uh it must be schools in every city in ireland right so uh anyway i i i go into one of those groups there uh but at that time there were yellow groups I don't know if you remember that um yeah. but uh, you know, those kind of email based uh, mm -hmm. discussions. And uh, so I go in, and one of them uh, was uh, maintained by a guy named Ken Franger, uh, unfortunately he passed away a few years ago. But uh, um, on that group, uh, somebody told me, hey, because uh, I, I emailed said, hey, I, I, we're going to Ireland. I'd like to train Irish stick. Is there anybody uh, you could uh, connect me to? So this one guy, Louis Pastor, was in. Um, Glasgow just uh, messaged me and said, hey, uh, reach out to this guy, Mr. Ramsey, and he uh, uh, probably can teach you a thing or two. So I, I emailed the, the, the man, and uh, he, uh, right at this point, he, one of his first uh, response was, uh, so are you two uh, Quebecois? And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we are. He says, okay, yeah, I'll teach you. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> so uh told me afterwards that, you know, he accepted to, to teach us uh, because he said you know, during the uh, Great Famine, uh, there were quite a lot of um, uh, Irish folks that ended up in Quebec, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being the overly Catholic uh, area that we were. And uh, I said, you know, the uh, you know, people in Quebec were very welcoming and uh, to uh, Irish people in need. And so that, that's why I, I decided to... Um, uh, teach you what I know. Um, but yeah, so we, we go to Ireland and again, in my mind, expecting that Irish stick is this big thing. Everybody must know about it. So, you know, we meet a few people around along the way and we get a range of, um, of uh, reactions to us talking about this. You know, when I say, hey, we're, we're gonna learn this um, stick fighting, you know, with chileles and, you have people that were genuinely interested. They were like, oh, yeah, no, that's great. And some people that were, uh, that found it very funny and some people that found it not funny at all. And uh, over the years, I've, I've had all of these reactions sometimes. Uh, because unfortunately, uh, Irish stick fighting is deeply associated with uh, what people perceive as a very dark period of Irish history. Um, and the uh, you know, 19th century, the faction fights, and uh, you know, for uh, people that may not have heard of the practice before, so in um, uh, at least uh, until the uh, early 20th century, there were all over Ireland there were some uh, uh, faction fights happening, and it was uh, uh, mostly battles between groups of, um, of people that were sometimes uh, family affiliated. Sometimes they were mm -hmm. affiliated by um, clans, by uh, old feuds, uh, political parties, uh, you name it. Um, and it would, uh, it would fight it out using mostly 
uh, stick, shillelaghs, uh, knobsticks, uh, however you want to name them. And uh, people would sometimes die in those fights. Uh, and interestingly, it wouldn't be a problem. You would end up in front of the judge and they would usually say, well, you know, that person entered into a faction fight. They knew what they were going into. Well, case closed. Um, and so anyway, at, but it, it was used by the British a lot to say, hey, look at these Irish people. You know, they don't know how to govern themselves. They're so violent. Uh, they, go, they do all these faction fights and they're drunk. And, um, and so the, you know, when the Irish people started to, to uh, go up and say, hey, you know, we, we got uh, to get together to get our independence and uh, and then a lot of people said you know we've got to get away from that that all that faction fight it's it's shameful and and so unfortunately because stick fighting was so closely associated with that people started going well uh you know we we shouldn't be doing that anymore either uh and so the reaction i got from a lot of people was what you want to learn this like are you are you crazy like this is just this is violent this is barbaric because they they saw they saw the darkness not that it was a yeah. martial art they, yeah yeah and most people we we give most people a map of the world and say put pins everywhere that martial arts originated you might get some people who say well they're everywhere and they'll put pins everywhere but most people are going to focus on southeast asia yeah absolutely yeah i, I how many times i've <laughs> had to explain that you know seeing i i teach irish martial arts and like what Irish martial arts? No, oh, that that's not. I probably familiar. assume it's some uh, drinking metaphor. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. That that too. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh yeah. I do Irish mar- uh, stick fighting? Oh, you stick uh, fight with a beer in your hand? Like no, no, that's not what we do. Uh, but again, it goes back to this this idea of the Irish uh, brawler stereotype that again a lot of people in Ireland are not too fond of, and they. Sometimes when you present it that, hey, I do Irish stick fighting or I want to do Irish stick fighting, they react with some hostility because they think that you're trying to peddle um, Irish stereotypes and that you mm. they, things that they're, again, they, they're kind of sick of and they, they want to, uh, people to move away from. And, but anyway, like, uh, can maybe come back to that later on, but that that was some reactions we we had to to um, uh, to go through, and so anyway, we we travel on to to Cork, and we meet our teacher there, and we uh, we learned the the technique. So we we learned that, uh, and by then we had realized that, but that uh, it was one of the rare people left in Ireland that still knew. The stuff he had learned it from his dad, grandfather, uncles, and um, he wasn't really teaching it. You know, he was uh, first. He just wanted to find people in Ireland that were doing that. It wasn't very su- successful. You know, so he went online and, and asked around and realized that yeah, he was uh, was pretty much alone in his corner. Mm-hmm. And when we finished training with him, he, he told us kind of out of the blue. He said. Uh, so, you, you know, you guys, you, you have a permission to teach this now. And uh, we were kind of taken aback because oh, that was not our intention at all. At mm. first, we were just, well, we just wanted to, to learn it and, and try what it was. But you then, must have been impressed with how quickly you picked stuff up. Yeah, well, I, you know, I knew that I, so, so soon. Yeah, well, by then, I, I had been doing lots of weapon martial arts and... Mm. Uh, um, yeah, I, I kind of never quite asked him why he granted us so, so quickly to us. Um, but we were, um, you know, when, when he told us that we also realized, you know, that, Hey, you know, this is, this is important. Like the, the this guy, uh, hasn't taught this to many people and, uh, like if we don't do something, this is just probably going to disappear. You know, he was saying like, 
my kids don't want to learn it. And, mm. and uh, since then he has just completely stepped back from teaching at all. He said, you know, he had uh, received some, some threats from, from people uh, mm. like, Oh, I want to come, come in and just, uh, uh, you know, kick your ass. And, um, and, you know, he does live in Northern Ireland where it's not a place where uh, still today you want to, uh, uh, to have people old, uh, uh, grudges against you. So anyway, he, he decided to just step back and leave the, all this to us. And but we continued for you no, know, we went back to Quebec. We continued for uh, uh, many years. Well, we still continue to now, but to uh, talk with him and uh, you know get his impression of what we do um, from a distance. And uh, got to meet him again. Uh, this past spring when I went to, to Ireland and, uh, you know, it's, it's still very happy with what we're, we're doing with, with his family heart. Um, but yeah, we, we spent many years of training together, just making sure that we got things right before we started to, um, get other people in our little group. And yeah, from there, it, it just, uh, started to snowball and, uh, I think it took me about 10 years before really feeling confident in what it was, uh, I was doing, but, um, yeah, it's been, uh, uh, it's been how many, like that more than 15 years now. And we, uh, we have groups in seven countries now, uh, oh, cool. all, uh, nonprofit. And, uh, this was one of the conditions that my teacher had, he said, don't want you to, turn this into a sport and I don't want you to make money out of it. And that was his only um, two conditions uh, for te- for allowing us to teach it. If, so, if, uh, I, if I may, um, I mean, as, as you know, very few people who are watching or listening would have experience with Irish stick fighting. We, we've had one gentleman on before who comes from a, a family lineage and without yes. even... It, you could probably guess who it is because it's such a small oh, yeah. one, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, Glenn. Glenn, I yeah, exactly. Somehow we, yeah, we're both in the same country, but we've we've uh, because of uh, life and things happening. Yeah, well, we've, we've actually he's, never he's met. in he's in. Well, Ottawa, now he's in, now he's in Newfoundland. Is, uh, oh, okay. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I'm in Ottawa. I <laughs> you're not okay. You're that yes. okay? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, it's Canada is a huge country. Oh yeah, but we have quite a few people who have spent some time with Filipino sticks. Yep, you know, Kali Eskrima, however you want to term it. Could you just give us a quick primer? I'm assuming you've you at least aware of Filipino martial arts. Absolutely, of the yeah. general different. Like, what what's the difference? So I would say the one of the biggest difference, and uh, you know, I, I know this is mostly in audio podcast I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to make this uh clear for sure. for our listeners but that so so i got a stick here this is uh oh yeah an antique i, I picked up in, in dublin last spring mm-hmm. uh but the the main difference uh, in our style comes from how we grip the stick so you know if you're doing kelly Eskrima, uh usually you'd be grabbing the stick around the hand right and what we do in Irish stick fighting is we, uh, or at least in our style, we we grab it around the third, or at least where the point of the stick here goes past mm. the elbow by an inch or two. So we grab it like this. So the uh, merlon, the uh, the knob is on top, and this is really a, like a defining thing for our style because. What this allows us to do is to take guards and do certain techniques that would be dangerous if this wasn't there, right? This is our yeah. kumdi, this is uh, the guard, kind of the shield. Uh, the same thing as with a sword, you know, you have to imagine that this is a bit like a, a guard. Okay. And so when I'm fighting, when I'm molding what we call our outside high guard, for example, this you know, this is in the way if somebody would want to attack my elbow, my face, I can block with this, I can block and repost at the same time. Uh, you know, I can use it when somebody comes uh, 
close and infighting. I can stab, I can strike with this end. I can also do it with the other end. Um, so if I was holding it here, suddenly I would be very, very exposed. And because of that, I would need to use some bigger motions and keep my stick maybe a little bit closer to my body to try not yeah. to get any advanced targets out there. But this allows me to do this and it allows me to, to swing the stick from an elbow motion like here, right? Again, where I would have to do these wider movements. Here I can throw my strikes a little bit more like I would uh, do a punch or jab. Again, because whenever I come back, I have this lower part here that's coming to cover my arm. Yeah. Right? Um, and I've had I've had a lot of people looking at this, you know, because it's kind of unusual and be like, oh, I I could totally get your arm when I you know like this. Sure, like I mean, and try. <laughs> <laughs> and and a huge difference, probably the, the most obvious difference is that sticks a lot longer. You know, it's about a a meter, right? About three feet. Yes. Although when we grab it, right, so the the length is uh, at least the um, active range is not uh, that much different from what you'd see in, in Kelly or mm. Spring. It is very different though when we do, like this is a, a favorite technique of mine uh, whenever we, we spar with, with people from, from other, uh, any other background, but a lot of with, with Kelly and Spring people, uh, we, we have this technique called a hook. So what we do is we slide a hand to the roll onto the knob here. We let go of uh, our lead hand and we swing from mm. uh, this stand position and we can come back instantly here. So it gives us a lot of possibilities range wise because suddenly, you know, my opponent gets a little bit used to my range. It's like, okay, mm. from this range, I know I'm, I'm out of this time of hand. The foot. You feel safe and you switch it on. Them. Yeah, so I can start yeah. thinking about you know what I'm gonna have to for dinner tonight or something, and then <laughs> bang, this yeah. happens. And they just whoa, I love it. Can't believe where where it came from. Uh, I a couple of years back I attended uh, my first uh, dog brothers gathering, and I was uh, uh, it, it was the first time I was really going in that kind of arena. And um, uh, one of the first fights I did there, you know, I one of the first techniques I tried. Oh, you didn't the, just go; you fought. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I, okay. I, I, if if anybody out there hasn't watched video of what these fights look like, um, pause this right now and go watch <laughs> because this is this is some serious stuff. You are not getting me in the in those rings. I don't care how much padding you're putting on. Please continue. Yeah, it was that. Uh, you know, for for me, it was a bit like um, again because there there's so much pressure being uh, like behind the style, and uh, even more so back then, being kind of the main figure representing it. You know, that I got I had so many people like like oh you should go you know you should go try this with the Dog Brothers, mm -hmm. uh, and you, so you'll never work. And uh, anyway, so I. I thought, okay, well, let's let's see see about that. And I so I met uh, 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 Sebastien, uh, pirate dog, uh, when he mm -hmm. came to one of my my seminars I was giving in Montreal. And um, you know, at at first, uh, we were he was like, uh, well, you know, I because I, I told him oh, I'd like to come to one of the those gatherings at some point. He's like, oh yeah, well, I don't know, you know, it's pretty it's pretty tough. And, and so by the end of the class, we sparred a little bit and told me like, yeah, yeah you should come to the next one. And um, so I, I went there and he was actually the first guy I found. And anyway, with, uh, usually, you know, with, with those gatherings, they say, you know, what, what, what goes on in the fights uh, stay there. They don't want people to start bragging or uh, yeah. talking about, about that. Uh, so people don't get, uh, don't get, um, hot-headed or uh start to do dangerous stuff uh just because they they, they don't want to look bad um but yeah i you know i i got to use this part of girl technique uh in in my fights and uh you know i remember like 
using it against uh, some people that, uh, you know, they, the, the, well, the first time I used it really, um, uh, the other guy was, you know, standing with a very high guard. I thought, like, okay, I'm going to go. And I went right for the ribs. Bang, bang, bang. And the other person, you know, doesn't budge, stays there, mm. takes blows. I'm like, man, okay, I'm not, not anything hard enough or it's not working. I'm just going to, okay, I'm going to switch strategies. And then by the end, <laughs> the fight comes to see me and he was like, man, when you were landing those blows on me, I just froze. I had no idea oh. what to do. I was not expecting that. I thought to myself, crap, <laughs> I should have kept doing that. <laughs> you had your strategy. It was working. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very, very neat uh, technique we have there. And uh, there's around about 40 uh, or so different techniques in, in entering bottom. Um, different strikes. What's the style called? What's the name of it? So Antrim Bada, Antrim, Antrim for Antrim County, which is uh, the the area it's from originally. So that's why we uh, we settle for that name. Because uh, one thing about the style is that it um, never quite had a name. It was just stick fighting. Because it, it was it was it's all family lineage, right? Kind of like yeah, yeah. you know old days of of karate. It was you know this family, this family, this family, and. Irish well, fighting, I think my understanding is all the same. I think even more it still so familial. Uh, mm. it, 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 I think it goes even beyond that. Um, like I, I had a revelation a couple uh, years ago when I watched this '80s documentary on Zulu stick fighting, and they were they were really um, they were really presenting how people were training really really traditionally, you know, and and. Uh, tribes and uh, and villages and how really the the art was passed down and I I kind of you know doing a lot of research on Irish stick fighting I, I realized that this was probably also how those things were passed down in in Ireland most of the time where you know you just have kids they start up really really young they just they want to imitate the adults right so they, they see the adults fighting so they start fighting with twigs and stuff and you know they they're they, they get pretty good and the um the adults look at that then at some point they see oh you know this one he's a lot better than the others let's just say uh, hey, come on come on over here kiddo i'll show you a few tricks and that it's kind of it's not necessarily like this lineage like you would see in uh like in japanese martial arts or where it's like they've got this style that you know i'm I'm handing it down to the next headmaster or something. It's more uh, like communal, where we we're just like this group, this this clan, or like we just you know from one family to the next, and people are just learning by imitation, and so there's no names to the techniques because you're just it's just stuff you've been doing since you were a kid, sure. um, and there's uh, you know that. There's there's schools and we know there were schools teaching that and we, we know there were secret techniques secret stuff because there's always people that want to keep their you know their 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 things to themselves and then what works for themselves and um, but yeah I think it was uh, it, it's just this very very old way I think of teaching martial arts that's uh, kind of lost today because we don't really we don't really do that. We, we do that in other things, like how kids learn to play ball or soccer or like how they, you know, how, how to learn how to um, just uh, hammer a nail or you know, there's all these skills that we learn from from our families and relatives and people around us just, just imitating and we just, yeah. it's the, it's, that's how it's done. We, we so, don't encourage a lot of figuring out, a lot no, of experimentation no. in martial arts, yeah. Yeah. It's got to be this way. Do it this way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that, that's it's. I think what I probably brought to the style was this. Uh, you know, we had to find names or techniques with mm-hmm. find a name to the style because now we're you know we're not just teaching our small little group. Now we're you know, we have this group opening up now in uh, 
in Montreal. We have this group now opening up in New York and Paris and they get like all these people from far away and they're like, oh, I can you remind me like how you so you you need some common vocabulary now to mm. be able to communicate those things and have people understand what you're speaking about um and understand the concepts so and also publicize it you know uh so uh but i we 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 try to stay very very true to what uh we learn um mm. but i I, I'm always very adamant on this that you know my my role in all of this is I'm teaching you what I've been taught. Um, you go on, you can you, know, you want to use that and for your own stuff, it's fine as long as you know say to tell people where it came from. Uh, yeah. But I'm not uh, you know that's I'm not here to change or perfect the style or anything. I, I found that what I learned and by pressure testing it was pretty, um, uh, pretty efficient. Mm. And, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's worth preserving and it's worked, uh, uh, it works. Yeah. Hmm. Now I'm, I'm curious because you have such a body of martial arts knowledge and experience prior to this, were there things that you found that you said, ah, you know, here, here's here's the family lineage. If the here's the the codification of what I was taught, but for my own personal purposes, if I'm stepping into a dog brother's ring, I'm going to make this adjustment or that adjustment. I'm going to add this. Like, did you find stuff like that? I would, I would imagine. Yeah, well, it, it, I think it was mostly um, the way to train it and practice it, um, um, because you know, like, well, bringing in training equipment, sparring equipment wasn't a thing before. Um, and, you know, finding ways to, uh, creative ways to, to teach and train those skills. Um, I, I think sometimes definitely, you know, I come up with some variations some things that I, I, I find that worked for me when I was sparring that I wasn't taught and uh, I will use them when I fight, obviously. Um, but I will, I'm always going to be, if I ever present them to students, I was like, this is not, this is not traditional style, but you know, if you're ever in a pickle, you can use that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, for, I, I, uh, I couldn't say like consciously that I've really integrated things that from other style. And I, I always been uh, a little bit careful about doing this because it's very hard to teach and publicize this style that because it's so uh, uncommon that you get people always coming up and saying, Oh, you made that up. You know, it's, I've been in Ireland all my life. I've never seen this. I've never heard of that. And, uh, and so, you know, I think it's for me, I'm proud of saying, Nope, this is, this is all stuff I've, uh, I've learned. Like, what I teach is what I've learned. Um, maybe the only things when I find that I really had to bring was the wrestling aspect. Um, mm. There's really not a lot of that in our styles. There's kicking uh, that is interestingly close enough to what you would see in, in some styles of Savat, uh, where you kick okay. not with the foot necessarily, but with the sole of your shoe. Um, because you're you're expected to be wearing our soul shoes, you're using using those to strike, but there are mostly kicks below the belt, uh, nothing to the head, nothing that uh, acrobatic, and um, you have, you have uh, well you have a few punching. It's we call it slapping. It's mostly backhand punches, uh, gouges, things like that. Um, there's and a few wrestling but like double and interestingly like we have the, these single or double leg takedown with the stick you have uh called the cross buttocks uh where we uh, just flip somebody over your your hips um but it, it's fairly limited and i figured out that um uh, also one thing one other thing that was done in ireland back then was collar and elbow wrestling um and also uh, 
they, they also had, I'm forgetting the, uh, there's a Gaelic name for this one, but uh, the, um, uh, oh, what's the name again? Uh, Scottish Backhold Wrestling was also taught over there. And I realize, you know, looking into that, that it was, it must have been kind of a compliment to stick fighting and mm. it gave you that strong base and grappling that you could use in faction fights. Uh, by the way, if you never want to uh, read or hear more about this, uh, Rudin McFadden is a guy that's been very hard at work resurrecting okay. color and elbow wrestling. Uh, would be a great people to. Um, talk to you in one of your episodes. Is that someone? Is that somebody you you know? You could connect us with. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. That'd be great. Yeah, please. Uh, it's awesome. a great judo guy from from Ireland, but he uh, I think he lives in Germany now. But he's he wrote a book about uh, collar and elbow, and has been uh, trying to bring it back to the sport now. Uh, oh, cool. Very interesting stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's yeah, it's been one thing that I've uh, um, kind of tried to. Uh, add on to the style mm. but yeah the it rest makes sense because you know eventually you're going to close range and that's a that's a long stick you're going to need to do something other than just both yeah. stare at each other and back up yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and especially in the like the dog brothers gatherings i was in if you, uh, because the, they just go on you know and even though you uh bunk the other guy in the head uh you might still just keep going and bring you down and then you better have something else than your stick fight because <laughs> it's uh you're gonna be in a, a world of hurt um but yeah it's uh I, I think you need to be well-rounded um and uh it, that's uh that's part that I'm, I'm trying to uh to bring back uh into our style nice. yeah. i'm curious after you put you said it, it took you about 10 years to really feel comfortable you're about 15 years into this have mm -hmm. you had any further conversations with the gentleman who originally taught this to you? Yep. Yep. What uh, are yeah, his like, thoughts on what you've done with it? Well, I, like I said, I I'm actually met him last time last spring when I, I went to Ireland. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I missed that part. We've talked we've been oh, all over the place on dates yeah, yeah. and places. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh oh, no, yeah. Quite all right. Yeah, it's just uh he's uh, I, I think like when I mentioned uh you know what I was doing. The other thing, like you know, I, you know, always very thankful for you to, mm. to trusting me with this. You know, and we're trying to follow. You know what uh, what you taught me and all this. And he, uh, you know, first thing he said was, "Good man." <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he's. I love it. Really, very happy with what we've been doing with this, and um, yeah, he's. Uh, like it, it doesn't seem to be uh, to have any doubts or distress nice. about where it's going. So I'm, you know, it's it's always uh you know with with your martial arts teacher, it's always a little bit like your your uh, your parents. You know, you want to make them proud <laughs> to yes, hear something I, like that. Like, oh. I understand. I understand. Yeah. And then for 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 some of us, not not me, but for some of us, those are the same people. So yeah, it'd be really challenging. Oh yeah. You yeah. you mentioned that that this is spreading and it there are a bunch of of groups. You you mentioned one in Montreal. And so, you know, I, I want to explore that because you know I'm not that far away. But mm -hmm. where where are these groups? Because I, I bet there are a bunch of people who are tuned in and they're like, oh, I, I want to if this is near me, I want to check it out. So Absolutely. how would they do that? So if you we have a website, uh, if you uh, search Antrim Butta or if uh, our alternate uh, Address is irishtech.com. So pretty, pretty simple okay. to find. And you sent us the websites for that. So we'll, that should be in the show notes when this goes live. Yes. yes. Uh, and on, on the side, you have a listing of all the, the clubs, the schools that are currently teaching. We have a lot of uh, what we call study groups um, because we're still, you know, it, it's been 15 years for me, but for a lot of uh, our uh, study group captains, and call it, or instructors, uh, it, it's not been quite that long. So, uh, you know, it, a lot of times people will email me saying, Oh, you know, uh, I don't have any group near me. And that's like, well, you know, some, some people in our groups do offer distance classes, but mm. otherwise, you know, not much I can do. I can really 
teleport to your place or <laughs> make a group spring up from the air, you know, so it's uh, it's not like karate or judo or, you know, it's still fairly, fairly rare. It's uncommon, yeah. 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 Which for a, lot, for a lot of folks, I'm sure, is the appeal. They want to learn something different. Yeah, yeah, and it's... Uh, I, I think a lot of people, you know, if you're if you're coming for even for boxing, I think you'd you'd find that uh, or many striking martial arts. I think you'd find Irish tech fighting to be a really great complement because of the the mechanics. You know, I think uh, I've had boxers uh, in my classes. You know, and they they catch on very quickly um, once they understand uh, uh, how the stick works uh, because the the mechanics. I think are easily translatable um, and yeah, and some of the, the tactics as well. Um, so yeah, if you're, uh, if you're uh, around one of our groups, I really encourage you to go in and have a look. And uh, uh, it's, um, uh, and if anybody is ever interested in opening up a group, you know, we, we usually ask that uh, they try to organize a seminar of some kind with one of our instructors. Uh, it could be, be anybody else. Uh, and uh, from then on, we can start building that, that relationship, that, that group. Um, and uh, yeah, then a lot of people do that. And uh, now we have lots of students and, and friends uh, and uh, in the States. And that's been, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been impressive sometimes when I look back at this. Wow, this yeah, I believe it. <laughs> and so, if you know, here here's one of my one of my favorite questions. You know, let's pretend we invent a time machine, and you know, you can go back. You to you said eleven when you started karate, eleven year old you. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know, you you only get a couple minutes, right? You're not sitting down forever, but you get a minute or two to say something to you all these years ago, what would you tell yourself? Oh yeah, that's, a, yeah, that, I, I think I, I try to imagine that a few times, you know, what I, what, I, what would I tell my younger self? I, I don't know if I could really say anything that would, that would uh, impact or change things. You know, when you're a teenager or pre-teenager, you know, it's just, <laughs> It's so true. You know, yeah, things are things are difficult. <laughs> things are, uh, you know, you you think you're all alone, thinking the way you do, and you know nobody has been through that before, and um, and your 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 future you. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be any better than my parents at, <laughs> at convincing me otherwise. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think what maybe what I would try to do uh, or try to say would be, you know, it's maybe yeah, uh, just it's gonna be all right. You know, it's gonna be all right. Um, uh, just um, you know, uh, uh, just go for it. You know, keep going, um, and you'll get there. Uh, I would probably respond like, "Oh, <laughs> what's that?" <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it would um, uh, probably what what I would try to, to say. And I yeah. yeah. Uh, you mentioned the website. Is there any other are there any other websites, social media, or anything that people should know about? Absolutely. Like um, so, I've got uh, maybe too many things going on. <laughs> no, but... I, I'm not going to say you you have too many things. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Others got... might, but... yeah. <laughs> Well, if you want to follow our style, you have Antrim Bada. We have a, a Facebook page uh, and uh, uh, Instagram account, I think. <laughs> That's not a check. Uh, yeah, I've got other people sometimes looking into that. But um, yeah, we also, I've got this uh, this uh, school going on. So it's uh, Batharak and Historical Fencing. Uh, we're in Ottawa, so we can also check us. So it's Bath, B A. H F F a little bit easier to, to spell out if you're, if you're looking for that online. Um, and also I've got this other blog I maintain called uh, HEMA Misfits. And it's uh, where I publish a lot of my uh, other research into uh, martial arts, history, sociology, 
So in there, I've got, you know, we've talked a lot about Irish stick and Japanese martial arts, but I, you know, I've been also teaching uh, Kima Circle Saber mostly from uh, doing that since 2002 now. Um, and so we, there's a lot of uh, things I, I, I wrote about in this, um, this blog that at some point I'd like to just uh, uh, put on, on writing and on paper, but, um, you know, there's been, uh, there's been a lot of, I've done on different subjects, but namely, I think things that resonated with people were uh, research I did on the origin of the, the term martial arts and how it came to the old the meaning it has today. Um, or another one, which is kind of related to a book project I'm, uh, I'm slowly working on, but it's uh, on the history of, well, I used to be a curator for a medical museum, uh, and uh, that got me into kind of this side uh, project, but uh, history of uh, the treatment of blade wounds it sounds extremely obscure and <laughs> and weird from uh, uh, when said like that, but uh, it's extremely interesting subject, you know, to to look into and see how certain people in the past that were seeing a lot more related wounds than any I guarantee any trauma uh, surgeon today uh, like probably never would never see as many mm. late wounds as some of these guys in the 16th, 18th century uh, and, and battlefields in Europe, you know um, and you know the, the accounts they give us uh, sometimes can even help to understand some of the techniques you see in martial arts today you know uh, anyway, so like, I've got a lot of, I uh, think, interesting uh, articles down there if uh, uh, people want to peruse it. So <laughs> Hema Misfits um, uh, also uh, nicknamed this blog, uh, I Don't Do Long Sword. Because, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know anything about Hema, but uh, a little long sword, tidy uh, bit. Yeah. A long sword is kind of the big, big thing in Hema, and I've never been interested in that. Whenever we're good to, to fans, I've got to explain to people that now I don't I don't do a long sword. So it became kind of a this uh, uh, this team <laughs> behind that, that blog of mine. Um, nice. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, probably how you uh, you can read a little bit more about what I do uh, is on those those uh, those pages. And uh, yeah, I've got this uh, book coming up, and I'm also working another one on uh, our style of Irish stick fighting. Which maybe one or two books, uh, not quite uh, decided yet, but there's definitely going to be a big technical part to it and the history part to it, of course. Uh, so that's that's nice. also coming up down the drain. Well, when that stuff comes out, please send send us links, and we'll drop that in social media and share that off to people. We'll, all all the things that you mentioned today that are available, we'll put in the show notes. So yeah, yeah awesome. I think it's cool. You got a lot of good stuff going on. That's we need more people doing doing lots of things out there. It makes makes me look less crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh so yeah, yeah. Me and me and you both. Yeah. 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 Well, we're we're just about at the end. So one more thing, and that's how do you want to close up? What are your final words to this audience today? Well, I, I guess final words would be um, you know, if you're uh if you're doing martial arts and uh, you know you, you ever thought about doing weapon martial arts, uh, you know what you think like oh you know what am I gonna get out of this? Um, I, do it, go do it. Uh, you know find a club somewhere, whatever it is, go try it. I think whatever you're doing right now will I think will benefit uh, your your overall uh, training and experience mm -hmm. you'll find some new concepts new understanding in there and uh yeah, if it, irish stick of course uh <laughs> whatever uh whatever uh rocks your boat but uh yeah i think we need we need more people uh deeply involved and interested in weapon martial arts um and uh yeah it's uh it's a lot a lot of value a, a game changer i think in, in many ways yeah 
Hey, thanks for sticking around, Max. Thanks for coming on, sharing your time and your stories. Audience, some cool stuff today. And I hope you will check out everything that Max has going on. Give his group a follow. And uh, let's all learn a little bit more about Irish stick fighting. I'm super pumped. I think this stuff is awesome. If you want to go deeper on the episode, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you want to go deeper on all the other stuff we do, go to whistlekick.com. If you want your martial arts school to have the best year it ever has, reach out and talk to us about our consulting offerings. You can get a hold of me directly, or you can find out more, fill out the inquiry form at whistlekick.com under the school section. We also offer seminars. We have a lot of fun in our seminars. We make students better by bringing in expert, qualified, alternate ways of teaching, not teaching them how to do stuff differently, teaching them how to do stuff in a different way, right? We're not going to change what your students do. Keep that in mind. Our social media is at Whistlekick everywhere. And my personal email, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.